Hello, today I'm going to be talking about my general troubleshooting tips for Mac. Usually when I'm presented with a Mac to troubleshoot, I follow the same type of workflow to determine what exactly is causing any given issue. Now these issues obviously on a Mac can have a wide range from internet issues to application issues, the computer's going slow, the spinning wheel of death is always rolling on and on. The issues can vary greatly and so with this kind of troubleshooting method I kind of start at the top and get more specific as I go to find the specific area in which I should be looking to find the culprit of what's causing the problem on my computer. And so I've prepared a little flowchart here to kind of diagram my process. The first question that I always ask is, is it reproducible? Can I get this issue to occur over and over again? Can I trigger it with certain actions such as opening an application or changing a certain setting? Can I get the issue to occur again. Sometimes issues will happen somewhat randomly, but they do happen over and over again. That can work as well as being reproducible in the sense that at least it's occurring over and over again. There are certain issues where it happens once every once in a while and it's really hard to track when it's going to happen to know what if any pattern it has. And in those cases, it's a lot harder to troubleshoot. And those are also the more rare cases, but all you're really left with for those kind of issues are to use the log files. Your computer is constantly recording the actions that it is doing and it records them in these log files. And so you can look through the log files and actually see each action that the computer is making. And that way you can start to track down at what time the issue happened and at what time a certain application was doing a certain function. It's a little more tricky when it comes to that. But luckily, like I said, most of the issues that occur on Mac are reproducible. And so we'll be over here on this second side of the troubleshooting chart. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. So first of all, if it is reproducible, Mac OS has some very useful utilities that you can use to narrow down where the issue is coming from. First is activity monitor. You can look at your CPU usage, your memory usage. You can look for any spikes in percentages and usage, etc., and start to narrow down perhaps an application that is causing the problems. The other one is to use console, and that is a, a collection of all your log files that you can use as well to, again, trigger the issue and observe what log files are created. Sometimes if you're lucky, the log file will even specify what is occurring, what's going wrong, and what application or setting is causing that. And so these are great tools to use. The problem is they can be a little tricky for beginners. It can be a little difficult to interpret what is being said in each of those. And so this second option, using a second user account, is usually a good place to start for most people. So you have your primary user account that you do all your work in. I generally keep a test user account on my computer as well. One that I never use, I never install anything in, I never open at all except to troubleshoot. And the reason why that is important is because then you leave that second user account free from any kind of issues that you cause as a user, whether it's installing an application, changing a setting, etc. And so what I'll do is I'll go into that second user account, that test user account, and try to recreate the problem. If it does not occur and the issue is resolved, then you have a user specific issue, meaning it's just occurring in the user account that you use all the time. If the issue occurs in that test user account as well, then you know you have a system wide issue. It's something on a larger scale than just user accounts. And that helps you narrow down what part of the computer you should be looking at. If it is a system wide issue, then I'll generally go into safe mode. Safe mode is a way to boot up your computer while disabling any kind of startup item. So a lot of applications will automatically start up when you turn on the computer. And so you can see if this issue is related to something on startup. And in this case, it'd be a system-wide startup issue. And so if the issue does not happen in safe mode, then you know that it is most likely something to do with when the computer starts up. And it's going to be, like I said, in the system files. And so you can go look in your system files, you look in your, your root library folders, 
and there are several folders I've listed out here. When troubleshooting, never do anything that you feel uncomfortable doing because it really can mess up your computer. But this is generally the area that I look in when dealing with a system-wide issue in relation to something that starts up with the computer. If you load up into safe mode and the issue does still happen, then you know it's not a startup issue, it's something else, something wrong with some other part of your computer. So I'll often go into disk utility and check if the hard drive is doing okay, check if the permissions are okay on the disk. That's more of a hardware issue. Um, you can also boot into your recovery drive on very specific issues such as internet connectivity. You can see if you can still connect to the internet in the recovery drive. This is important because it rules out your operating system. It really limits how much software is running. And if you can still use the internet in your recovery drive, then you know that your internet hardware is okay. And as a last resort, you can always reinstall your operating system. Although it is recommended to back up your files when you reinstall your operating system, a reinstall should leave your files in place. It should not erase any personal files. But again, you'll want to have a backup for that, just in case. Okay, so it, so going back up here, if the issue is fixed in a second user account, then you know that it is a user-specific issue. So then again, I'll boot up into safe mode to see if it is a user-specific startup item that is causing the issue. So if the, if the issue does not happen in safe mode, you know it is something related to startup. And so there are a couple locations for user-specific items that you can check out to see if those are causing the problem. And if the issue does continue to happen in safe mode, you know that you have a user-specific user item that is not directly related to the computer starting up. And so then I'll gen generally look in these locations, your cache, your internet plugins, any specific folders, such as if the issue is recurring in Safari specifically, then you can look in the Safari folder in your user library, uh, as well as your preferences. All these are in your user-specific library. So again, if you do not feel comfortable messing with these computer files, I do not recommend you trying them, but you can still follow this flow chart to get a better idea of what is going wrong on your computer. Also doing these kind of things, you can also identify maybe there's an application that just needs to be uninstalled. And a solution as simple as that can fix your issues on your computer. So I hope that that brief overview of troubleshooting on a Mac helps. What I plan to do is I will put the link for each of these steps to separate videos of how to do. So if there is a certain step that you'd like to learn more about, go ahead and click on one of these steps and uh, watch the video of how to do that. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.